Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Starman driving his Tesla Roadster beyond Mars orbit. Petition seeks to rename Oakland, California Airport. And FAA opens comments on ATP, type rating standards. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's November 7th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Tesla Roadster that was sent into orbit with a mannequin dubbed Starman in the driver's seat has passed the orbit of Mars and will soon reach the apogee of its orbit before starting back towards the Sun. Starman and his Roadster will reach the furthest point from the Sun, about 155 million miles, on November 8th. And while the vehicle will start back towards the center of the solar system at that point, it will still be 2020 until it makes a close approach to Earth. And it will still be 32 billion miles away. The car will still be closer to Mars at that point, about 4.6 million miles. In fact, Ben Pearson, an astronomer who is tracking Starman's orbit, predicts that there will not be a truly close visit to the home planet until about 2091. Pearson predicts that Starman will reach his furthest point from Earth, at least in the near term, on February 20, 2019. At that point, the distance will be some 2.446 astronomical units, or 227 million miles. After the break, Hartzell appoints Wuhan Hangda Aero as Service Support Center in China. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Hartzell Propeller has appointed the Wuhan Hangda Aero and Technology Development Company Limited as a service and support center in the People's Republic of China. Wuhan Hangda Aero is located in Dangxi Hu District of Wuhan, the capital city of Hubei Province, China. It was founded in 2000 and established as a Part 145 repair station with CAAC, EASA, and FAA certifications for wide capabilities of hydraulic, electromechanical, pneumatic components, landing gears, and propellers. Born out of necessity in 2012, the 655th Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Group embraced its destiny to restructure as a wing during a ceremony at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, October 20th. The 655th is the Air Force Reserve's Command's first ISR wing. Growing national security needs for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities in the years following the attacks of September 11, 2001, prompted the Air Force Reserve Command to increase its ISR capacity. A service developed by Arion and FlightAware has gone live, providing airlines with global flight tracking ahead of the ICAO Global Aeronautical Distress Safety Systems Recommendations, which will be effective November 8, 2018. 
Global Beacon provides airlines with minute-by-minute -minute global aircraft tracking for their aircraft at all times, anywhere in the world. Global Beacon is the first of its kind turnkey solution that surpasses GAD standards and recommended practices for flight tracking. A trip from Herbert Field, Florida to Tyndall Air Force Base typically takes two hours, but in the wake of Hurricane Michael, it was a four-hour journey for 16 airmen from the 823rd Red Horse Squadron. The airmen from 823rd RHS officially joined a skeleton crew of first responders, including the 820th Base Defense Group from Moody Air Force Base, Georgia, 23rd Civil Engineering Squadron Prime Beef from Moody Air Force Base, and a 93-person rideout team from Tyndall Air Force Base. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. There is a movement in Oakland, California to rename the International Airport as Maggie G. Oakland International Airport. If successful, the airport will be the first in the U.S. to be named after a woman. According to a petition, G. was a member of a pioneering group of women in World War II who waited in the war effort by enlisting in the Women Air Force Service pilots. She was also one of only two Chinese-American women to serve as a WASP. These women pilots worked stateside ferrying planes, towing targets for gunnery training, and serving as instruments instructors for male pilots. Over 25,000 women applied to the WASP but only 1,074 were accepted and made it through the rigorous training program. 38 of these pilots died in service to their country. Maggie spent much of her life serving her country and her community. She finished putting herself through school at UC Berkeley and spent the bulk of her career working as a physicist at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. In 2009, Maggie and her fellow WASP received the Congressional Gold Medal and recognition in their significant service. So far, over 4,000 people have signed the petition. After these messages, FAA opens comments on ATP type rating standards. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. In 2013, the FAA's Aviation Rulemaking Advisory Committee was charged with the establishment of an Airman Certification Standards Working Group to assist in the development of standards, training guidance, test management, and reference materials for Airman Certification Testing. The original task focused on the Private Pilot, Commercial Pilot ATP and Authorized Instructor Certificates and the instrument rating in the airplane category. The task was expanded in February 2016 to include the Aircraft Mechanic Certificate with airframe and or power plant ratings. The task was further expanded in September 2017 to add the Sport Pilot and Recreational Pilot Certificates in all airplane categories and the Private Pilot Commercial Pilot ATP and Instructor Certificates and the Instrument Rating and the remaining aircraft categories to include Rotorcraft, Powerlift, and Glider. The interim final report contained a recommendation for the Airline Transport Pilot and Type Rating for Airplane ACS. The FAA received that recommendation from ARAC on June 22, 2018. The FAA has reviewed the draft ATP, Type Rating ACS, and is now seeking public comment. The FAA will review and consider all comments received and make any necessary changes prior to issuing the final version of the ATP Type Rating ACS. 
Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.